It was 6 a.m. and two-tone, my 1,200-pound horse, <laughs> and I had been in the saddle for over an hour. We were riding along a ridge um, in, in Mayer, Arizona, on a 1,500-acre ranch gathering cattle. We were riding along, and two-tone decides to go down a hill. <laughs> He's down the hill. I'm sorry. He decides to go down the side of a mountain. <laughs> it's like 45 degrees, and I'm sitting way back in the saddle so that I don't fall over his head. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Tudon decides to stop. I mean, he stopped abruptly. And we're going down the side of this hill with shale, and it's slippery, and you don't want to be falling because it's, it's sharp as <laughs> well. And he stops, and I'm click-clicking him. Come on, boy. You can do it. You can do it. He's not budging. <laughs> He's not budging. And then all of a sudden, in like the blink of an eye, as abruptly as he stops, he decides to go straight up the hill. And I'm sort of gathering myself on the saddle to make sure that I now don't go over backwards. <laughs> That's not a good thing to do. And I'm click-clicking him. I'm, come on, boy, you can do it. Let's go all the way around here. He stops again, abruptly, as he did before. And he does, he's not sure what to do. There's no trail here. We're cutting our own trail. <laughs> and it occurs to me that I've got three choices here. <laughs> this is not going well. So I can dismount. Well, it's not a good idea to be dismounting when you're going straight up a hill, if you get my drift. A little dangerous. The second thing I could do is I could um, stay put. I could stay put and wait for Two-Tone to figure it out. Well, that's not a very good idea either, really, when you think about it. So my third decision possibility is to ride the horse the way I know how to ride the horse the way I was trained. Wow. <laughs> wow. We got down, but it made me think that all of us have the same three choices. The same three choices here. We can dismount, which means we can quit, either mentally or physically. We can stay put, which means we can do nothing. We can settle. We can sort of watch the world go by, and we can wait for somebody else to take the lead. Boy, if that's, that may be the biggest leadership challenge we have facing us in the world today, is that everybody seems to be waiting for somebody to do it. The third decision is to decide. The third decision is to lead, is to ride the horse the way you were trained. And make no mistake about it, we have to decide. We got three choices, dismount, stay put, or ride the horse the way we were trained to do it. We have to decide, and not deciding is still a decision. Let me give you an example of that. McKinsey and Company recently released a survey where the impact of not deciding was highlighted with some fairly significant drama. 64% of the middle managers in this survey were waiting for the economy to improve so they could find a new job. 64%. Why do you think that is? Because these middle managers are feeling abandoned. They're feeling abandoned and underappreciated, and they're going to, as soon as it gets better, they're going to go find a place where they can be appreciated. We are all faced with these same three decisions every single day. And the first step in great leadership, the first step in what we call contagious leadership, is to decide to ride the horse. Decide to be a leader. Decide to focus your assets on, <clears throat> to focus on your assets, not on the broken string as we talked about in a previous video. Decide to create a culture where people do not focus on the broken string. You'll make this decision every day, <laughs> several times a day over and over again. Any of you who have ever <laughs> decided to be on a diet know. <laughs> You know, you're, you're remaking the decision all the time. That's just the way it is. But once you've decided, now you've got to reinforce it. Here's an extreme example of how a great leader in our mind just not only decided to nurture his culture, but he reinforced it. He made it clear to his team that they would focus on their three strengths. And when a woman at a social event, one of his people, his organizational people, walked up to him with clear intention to talk about a broken string, his solution was he turned on his heels and he walked away. He didn't say, I'm sorry. He didn't say goodbye. He didn't apologize. He just walked away. The people in his organization were going to focus on what was possible, not on the broken string. And the only way he knew to constantly reinforce that message was to do that. Now, some of you may think, 
This is a little abrupt, <laughs> okay? Well, maybe it is, but it was his way of doing it. The key message here is that once you've decided, once you've decided to take that lead and to focus on the three strings in your assets, now you have to figure out ways to stay focused. And we've got some tips here in that regard. The first is to be aware of and grateful for what you have. We've talked about this in previous videos, but you need to be so aware of what your three strings are, what your assets are, that your team can recite that purpose. Like if somebody pointed a gun to their head at 3 o'clock in the morning, they know what it is. The second thing you've got to do is communicate what you have. Communicate your assets. Communicate your three strings. Keeping your assets a secret is generally not particularly helpful. <laughs> your culture will be what you say it is. And if you can create a story and a history around your culture and reinforce that with that message and communicate it effectively and communicate it with passion and communicate it with frequency, now you're talking about building a culture. Third thing you need to do is focus every conversation on how you will, not why you can't. Hmm? How you will, not why you can't. Remember in the introductory video, we talked about the work we had done with Wells Fargo Home Mortgage, a particular region who had been ranked number 22 out of 28 regions and moved to number two in 12 months. This is exactly what they did. We encouraged them, and we developed a seven-point strategy. And all seven strategies were targeted at the same thing, and that is shifting the conversation away from the broken string. And they had their own broken string. We shifted the conversation away from the broken string onto the three strings that they had, and we shifted it from away from how we will to how we uh, to why we can't, and uh, or we shifted it sorry away from why we can't to how we will, and it became a powerful, powerful motivating force inside the company. Fourth thing: identify what's possible rather than what is expected. So many managers are submitting the same budget year in, year out. 3% increase, 5% increase. It's the same 3 or 5 or 7 or 12% increase they've been submitting for the last 10 years. What if, what if the potential for that manager is actually 30%? That's looking at possibility. Frankly, that's what Wells Fargo did as well, is focused on possibility. The fifth step here is to celebrate the shift. You'll see a shift. When you start to focus on possibility and focus on your three strings and stop focusing on the broken string, you'll see a shift. You'll see a shift in attitude. You'll see a shift in, in, in uh, morale. You'll see a shift in fun. You'll see a huge shift in results. The best way to nail down worthy behavior and make sure it's modeled is to celebrate it and celebrate it often. Finally, inside of this, you need to be an unforgettable leader. How you do that? <laughs> That's for another video. <laughs> In the meantime, be well and be contagious.